Welcome into Always College Football. This is a YouTube exclusive where we are breaking down the 10 best coaches to never win a national championship. And I was actually a little bit surprised um, kind of putting this list together. A couple of these guys, it's like, man, I can't believe he never won one. I mean, it just surprised me a bit. And then there's the obvious ones that you know never won, but had they been at a different place... I think it was highly likely that they probably would have. Let's start at number 10 and work our way all the way down to one. At number 10, I went with Chris Peterson. Best known for his time at Boise State, the guy is the ultimate program builder. Of course, the BCS buster at Boise. Everyone remembers the Statue of Liberty and the hook and ladder and the other things that he did. But oftentimes when Chris Peterson got a chance with the Broncos and he played against the likes of the Power Five, he usually came out on top. Pretty amazing, too. When you look at two undefeated teams in 2006 and 2009, had a great year pretty much all the time. <laughs> they were steady Eddie. And then at Washington, almost had a chance to go and, and play for a title as well. They made it to the playoff there in 2016, but couldn't get over the hump, could not get past Alabama. But Chris Peterson, one of the 10 best coaches to never win a title. At number nine, I went with Hayden Fry. And you think about what the Iowa Hawkeyes were in 1979. In Iowa football history, they had played for 80 years prior to Hayden Fry arriving in Iowa City, and they had been to two bowl games. Well, that all changed pretty quickly with Hayden Fry. He started his career at SMU, built him into a program that got some respect. Then he went to North Texas, turned them into a decent program in the 70s before arriving in Iowa City. And from that point forward, he made Iowa football, Iowa football. Now, think about just how successful they were. They were excellent from a record standpoint, but you might also look at too, he never finished higher then 10th in the country in his 20 years in Iowa City, and he won 10 games just three times. So for those that want to push back, uh, fair enough, but he won two Big Ten titles at Iowa. It's hard to do, especially when you take into account just how good the Big Ten was from top to bottom starting in 1979 all the way through the time in which he retired. So Hayden Fry would make the list. At number eight, Mike Gundy. Now, Oklahoma State has had some success prior to when Gundy had become the head coach in Stillwater, but not like they were now. I mean, Jimmy Johnson was pretty good there in the early 80s. Les Miles had a really nice run. Uh, Pat Jones had a really nice run there from 84 to 88. But what Mike Gundy did was take over a team that was, for the most part, kind of lower tier Big 12 and kind of turn them into a mid to high high tier team. And then they've been very steady ever since. Now, are there some peaks and valleys? For sure. But they've been able to rally up, most notably in 2011, when a lot of people felt like they should have played for the national championship. They didn't. Alabama ultimately did, and Alabama ultimately won the title. But a lot of people felt like Oklahoma State deserved a chance to play LSU that year. They didn't get that shot, but that was the best team that Mike Gundy coached. So he cracks the top 10. And I don't think is what is a huge surprise, but if Mike Gundy were to go to a place that had maybe a little bit higher octane or maybe a little higher ceiling, maybe he would have cracked down the door at some point. At number seven, will be John Cooper. Now, he did not you know, he did not do a great job against his against his arch rival. Simple as that. If we're going to sum up John Cooper's career, just not very good against his rival and especially not good in the postseason. He was 2-10 and 1 against Michigan and he was 3 and 8 in the postseason at Ohio State. 6 times during Cooper's tenure, they lost to both Michigan and lost their bowl game. Now, some people will kind of judge John Cooper unfairly. Um, people are going to focus on his failures, which is fair, completely fair. But he also won 111 games as the head coach of the Buckeyes. He won three Big Ten titles and coached Heisman Trophy winner Eddie George. So there were a lot of positive moments in there as well. But the performances against Michigan and the performances against teams in the postseason will ultimately define his legacy. And both left a little something to be desired. At number six, I went with Gary Patterson. 
Now, this one is going to surprise some folks, but Gary Patterson took over at TCU there in, you know, 1999, 2000 in that vicinity, and he had an amazing run. An amazing run. You think about what he built there in the WAC, and to think that they played in four different conferences is pretty remarkable. Now, you think he played in the WAC in the first game he coached. Then they kind of went over and became the you know the the Mountain West to the Big Twelve. They were in the Big East, like they were all over the place. So TCU is well traveled. But we have seen under multiple stops, and ultimately Sonny Dykes got them to the national championship game. But a lot of people feel like that 2014 TCU team was the best team in the country at season's end. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't think they could have beaten Ohio State, but still they were on the outside looking in. But there were times there in the late 2000s, 2009, 2010, Rose Bowl victories, Roll Bowl performances that TCU and Gary Patterson did some amazing things. So I have him and at number six, probably a little high for most. At number five, Brian Kelly, the current head coach of LSU, former head coach of Notre Dame. Brian Kelly, I think, is a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. Complete, no doubt, don't even waste your time debating it because it's not even something that is capable of being debated. The guy has won everywhere he's been, dating all the way back to his time at the at the sub-FBS level to when he was at Central Michigan to when he was at Cincinnati to when he was at Notre Dame to now what he's done at LSU. The guy has reinvented himself a few times as well. I think he does an amazing job. I think he is a great, great coach. He's been to the playoff multiple times, was in the national championship in 2012. Even when he went to the national championship in 2012, he realized that he needed to reinvent himself because the way they were coaching that Notre Dame team would not be capable of winning a national championship, so we had to adjust, and he has since done that. But I think Brian Kelly, I think before he retires, he'll get one. I do. Whether that's at LSU or elsewhere, I think he will get one. So he's on the list right now at number five, but it might not be for long because I do think he's got a really good chance of getting one in his time there on the Bayou. At number four, I'm going with Barry Alvarez. There was no Wisconsin football before Barry Alvarez. Right? He was he built the program from the ground up in the modern era, and it just wasn't a thing before he got to Madison, Wisconsin. Now, before the Badgers won the Rose Bowl in 1993, the Badgers had not been to a bowl game in a decade, and they had not been to a Rose Bowl since 1962. During Barry Alvarez's 18 years in Madison, they went to 13 bowl games, including four Rose Bowls, and in the 18 years prior, from 1972 to 1990, the Badgers went to the postseason just three times. He's also the first coach in program history to win 10 games, and he did it four times. So the Badgers have six conference titles in its history before Barry Alvarez became coach. They had not won a title since 1962, and he was the first coach since the late 50s and the early 60s to win multiple Big Ten titles. So Barry Alvarez, the architect of the Badgers, he comes in at number four. At number three, I went with Frank Beamer. And much like Barry Alvarez, Frank Beamer took a program that was kind of in purgatory and made it into a national power. Now, like Mike Gundy, like some of the other coaches that have made this list before, to do it at his alma mater, I think says an awful lot. Now, he was hired in an era in which they did not have high expectations for their coaches early in their tenure. He was hired in 1987. He had two nine-loss seasons in his first five years. He might not have been able to build what he built after they had just two winning seasons from 87 to 92. But that all changed in 1993. They won the Independence Bowl, finished that season ranked number 22, and began a run in Blacksburg that included eight consecutive 10-win seasons, including playing for a national championship in 1999. And they had since had 22 consecutive winning seasons. So Frank Beamer in at number three should come as no surprise. At number two, I went with Bill Snyder, who was the head coach at Kansas State from 1989 to 2005, took a brief hiatus, and then returned to the sideline from 2009 to 2018. Widely considered maybe the best 
a college football coach uh, to never win a national championship. The Kansas State football program experienced a pretty remarkable turnaround when he was the head coach. When he took over in 1989, the program had just one winning season in their previous 84 years and was considered the worst program in the sport. Well, they quickly implemented a bunch of changes and transformed the program into a consistent winner. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, 11 bowl appearances for Bill Snyder, a couple of Big 12 conference titles, numerous All-Americans, numerous NFL players. Bill Snyder, I think, to do more with less the way he did, definitely uh, among the most impressive coaches in the history of the sport. And then finally, the best coach to never win a national championship, that would be Bo Schembechler. However, he was the architect of college football's all-time winningest program. And if you look at the Wolverines, um, they kind of slipped there in the 50s and 60s. And then when Glow, uh, Glenn Edward Bo Schembechler arrived, and he arrived and went 8-3 and three in his first season in 1969, it was the first time the Wolverines had back-to-back -back winning seasons in nearly a decade. And he was hired from his alma mater, Miami, Ohio. At that point, it was known as the cradle of coaches. There are many ironies to Bo Schembechler's career. I think what's fascinating about this is that he was so invested in the Michigan and Ohio State rivalry, the fact that he's from Ohio and coached for Woody Hayes before he would coach against him, I think is very fascinating. And what was billed as the 10-year war, Shem Beckler and his mentor, Woody Hayes, they would split every Big Ten title from 1969 to 1978, with Bo actually holding the 5-4-1 to one advantage. Never won a national title, but he did win 13 Big Ten titles in 20 years had a winning record against Ohio State, and brought the Wolverines into the modern era and the national spotlight. So Bo Schembechler takes the top spot as the best coach ever to never win a national championship.